Shoot. Hi, Sid. Hi. Episode Michael. 11. <laughs> So this episode 11 is spelling yes. T with yeah. F and B. Yeah. And today's episode is touching back on a subject that I've covered in one of the F and B Geminars. Uh, but, you know, to, um, but then I wanted to make sure that we actually conversated about that, right? So that yeah. can be Geminar the way let's I view it. Yeah, let's conversate. The way I view it is more like a, uh, you know, me to the audience, kind of yeah, like yeah, an yeah. instructor in a classroom mm-hmm. type of thing. But this mm-hmm. is more of a conversation piece, right? So Hi, friend. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Not stage at all. No. We, we don't, we don't, yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> no. no. But anyway, so today's episode is uh, the ethically sourced diamonds. Is it at all possible? Is it? Um, it's possible, but uh, to but to, you know I'll get into what I feel about it, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about. Um, did you want to kind of go over what Google's definition is of eth- ethics and what's ethical or what's okay. not ethical? So I just typed in ethical, okay? Uh-huh. And dictionary uh, definition of this means well. Pertinent to whatever we're talking about, right? right? Because there's yeah. multiple yeah. definitions for a lot of words. Of course. Um, okay. So in this case, it means avoiding activities or organizations that do harm to people or the environment. Right. Um, now, people have confused it with, you know, with ethic, ethical and what is ethical to having it be made domestically or, or in the U.S. Right. That is incorrect. Mm-hmm. So let me let me kind of um, go over that. So so well, there's a book definition. There's a definition by the book. There's a definition on how people are taught, right? And then there's also a definition if you want to think outside the box, right? Um, so the way I learn personally is okay. I will take the information from whoever's trying to teach me the books, audio, tapes, whatever. And I normally will just take in that information. I'll kind of filter out what I believe and what I don't. Right. That's mm-hmm. normally that's how I learn as Take a person. Take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, exactly. So, when it comes to ethics, and and if you're saying that the definition of ethics is to not harm people or the environment, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you also mentioned, well, there could also be a difference between how it's perceived domestically or here in the United States versus outside of the United States. Uh, I mentioned this in the F and B Gemini. So let's just say hypothetically, okay. uh, one of the uh, unethical practices uh, here in the United States is that we do not believe in child labor, right? I have two kids, and I totally get what where that's coming from, right? I do not want my kids to be working when they're underage. They should be going to school. They need to feed their minds, and when they come of age, then that's when they'll work, right? Uh, but let's just say hypothetically, if I was placed in, if I grew up in a third world country, I'm fortunate enough to be in, to be living in America my whole life. But if I was in a third world country, and let's just say hypothetically, I didn't have my parents, my grandparents were the ones who were, took care of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and let's just say I'm nine years old at the moment, and my grandparents are having health issues, and they're and I've been dependent on them to feed me and and support me my whole life, right? And they can no longer do it. And there aren't any government incentives. There aren't any government help. There aren't any government programs. Or the, or I don't have any other family members or friends. Or they don't either to help me. Then, hey, you know, at nine years of age, if no one's going to help me, I'm guess who's going to have to help me? Myself, right? So in that sense, where is the gray area? Where does that cross, right, between uh, black white and gray right are you being forced against your will to do it no right because who else is going to feed me if the government is not helping me if i don't have uh, my grandparents are ill i don't have my parents and there aren't there isn't anyone else to help me i'm gonna have to help myself or else i won't survive so in that instance is it unethical Right. So, uh, again, this is coming from a, a person that don't believe in child labor because I have two kids here in the United States. and I don't believe that they right, should be yes. working, mm-hmm. you know. So but anyway, um, so so that's why it's, it's definitely a gray area. Now, in terms of jewelry, right, yes. uh, what's ethical and what's not ethical has been perceived as, OK, well, when it comes to ethically sourced diamonds, um, 
the reason why this notion even came to play is because, uh, you know, back um, about 10, 20 years ago, uh, there, a lot of diamonds were being used to fund wars, and they were called blood diamonds, mm -hmm. right? And so there was a Kimberley process, to make a long story short, uh, was imposed by the United Nations to ensure that if a diamond was mined and, and, and manufactured, uh, that it has to be monitored uh, so that it's not funding any kind of violence, war, um, child labor, like these cer certain laws that um, big nations that consume diamonds uh, hopefully are against, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes down to, well, is that possible? Um, it, it, we as a human race will try to do everything and try to help as of that process as much as possible. Uh, but to say that it's, not, it's, a, uh, it's a perfect system is far from the truth, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I'm in the trade. I understand how it works. Uh, and You're there are- You're spilling the tea, guys. <laughs> uh, I, you know, there, there's way too many exchanges of hands, right? From the time it's mined either in Africa, Russia, Canada, or wherever it's being mined from, mm -hmm. uh, to the person that purchases the rough diamonds, to the cutters, to the manufacturers, to the wholesalers, to the suppliers, to the retailers, and finally to the end consumer. Uh, you're talking about all of these people that have to make a margin to make a living in order to finally sell it to the person that puts it on their ring. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just way too many exchanges of hands. Now, the only way to actually monitor at the moment is to say that, hey, I signed a piece of paper saying that I abide by the Kimberly process, I abide by these laws, I abide by these things, but still you, at the end of the day, hopefully are able to work with a vendor or supplier that's trusted in the business and trust that they are doing the right thing. But at the end of the day, there's just way too many organizations that are in far, you know, in between mm -hmm. that how can you really prove who's being, you know, uh, that one person in the organization may be just, it, it takes just that one person to be unethical uh, based on these standards uh, to, to m make that system flawed, right? So, so I would say, um, is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Anything is possible. But uh, we mentioned this in the past uh, that in order for it to truly make it possible is that you have to control the entire environment from, from beginning, beginning to end. end. So in other words, uh, let's just say Fire and Brilliance owns the mine. We will also have to hire people to mine for the diamonds. We would also have to be the cutters of the diamonds and we will also have to be the supplier of the diamonds and then finally the retailer of the diamonds and control the entire process and at the same time monitor the people that works with us and hopefully believe that they are ethical and mm -hmm. they're trained properly and all of that, right? So, right. Um, I think that's where people kind of get confused between mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, it needs to be made in the U.S. in order for it to be actually like ethically sourced, environmentally sourced. Um, but I think that's just because they're tying it with like, because the people that you're purchasing these goods from, uh, you know, own the process and can make sure that it's like within their, you know, visibility, mm -hmm. like, you know, if they live in the U.S., it's got to be in the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. um, then you know that like, yeah, okay like they it was ethically sourced or it was like something that was like environmentally sourced right. um but i mean you know there are clothes that you can buy from that have tags that if you were to look at them they say made in vietnam made in made in china does that make it in india in bangladesh and wherever right? yeah so, does that yeah. make it unethical All right I, I think ethics is something that is shared within a specific geography uh, I think ethics will range from one geography to the next, depending on the culture, depending on the environment, depending on the governments, depending on what they need within that geography, right? Mm -hmm. We try to streamline it and try to um, spread that message, especially in the jewelry business anyway, through the Kimberly process and say that, hey, you know, these are the things that everyone should abide by if they want to be within, in the trade and hope that everyone's following the rules. But um, as mentioned in my F&B Geminar, there are many instances in the past where it's been proven to be flawed mm -hmm. uh, because we can't, at the end of the day, control seven billion people. Right, right? very <laughs> true, very true. And there's seven bi billion people, and obviously seven billion people aren't all in the trade, I mean, obviously, but mm -hmm. uh, but what the, uh, my point is there are just way too many people and all it takes is one corrupted person to do something different, right? So. So yeah, so um, is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. Is it is it um, 
Is it likely? Uh, it can be, but it, it, it's only guaranteed if you control the entire process, and and that's where it becomes difficult. Now, um, there are technologies that <gasps> that can potentially uh, make this process possible, uh, but uh, that's for another episode that we can talk about. Right. Right. Stay so. tuned. We're gonna be talking about it very very soon. Um, right. So. Right. So do you have any uh, opinions, inputs? Do you, I mean, have you, um, I know that you manage our social media accounts. Um, have our fans or um, customers or, or what have you, have they ever brought the subject up to you in, in terms of what their opinions are or anything like that? I think, um, I think they still are unaware of exactly how these things work. Mm -hmm. um, Unless, you know, you do further research into it. Um, they, you know, people usually trust the whole Kimberly process, mm -hmm. uh, you know, label on the things. But again, like you mentioned, you cannot absolutely be sure unless you owned everything from the ground up. Mm -hmm. um, and there are people who still question to this day, like, okay, like, what if, you know, what if something is made or manufactured overseas or, you know... Um, I'm not sure if, you know, what the process is to ensure that it's just everything is, you know, cruelty free, right. um, labor, you know, intensive, like that is not. And that's just very conflict. difficult to prove, um, regardless of the jewelry business or not, as you mentioned earlier about, you know, T-shirt, right? So mm -hmm. even cars, uh, vehicles, right? Uh, a lot of vehicles are saying that, uh, stating that it's been assembled in the U.S., but the parts are being made all over the world. Right, exactly. Right. Uh, and that doesn't make it unethical. Right. So, so we, you know, it's 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 a process. I mean, we live in a global world now. Right. Employees right? Ev are everywhere. Empl yeah. Work is everywhere. <laughs> right. So consumption is from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so every country has its own um, uniqueness and strengths. For example, right. I believe that the U.S. right now has a big strength in technology. Uh, especially in the Silicon Valley with the iPhones mm -hmm, and Google yeah. and Facebook and you know that's where our strength is right uh, and then there are other parts of the world where their strengths are uh, of different place uh, of different um, resources Japanese with their cars right right so with the uh, you know so uh, and then, but then we have Tesla now where Elon Musk just you right. know, changed the game right so mm -hmm. we have that and uh, and then obviously with jewelry it's it's um, it's the mines are owned primarily in Africa, Canada, and Russia, so they have the, the upper hand there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, and specific companies have very uh, big um, influence, such as the beers, right? So they have the influence there. So it just depends. It depends where you live and where the strengths of that country is. Yes. So, but but yeah, to um, but then to say that if it's ethical or unethical because it's outside of the country or within the country, I th I don't think that should be the question i think the true question is is it ethical to you mm -hmm. uh, if you're the consumer at the end of the day and you're buying the product uh, if you feel like it's ethical then it might be worth it to you if you feel like it's unethical then you shouldn't buy it right um uh, so that's 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 that's, a tr that's the ultimate the end of the uh, day the the true question because what's uh, what's unethical to me may be ethical to you and what's unethical to you may be ethical to me Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, depend on how we we're taught, what we, you know, and all all the different factors of uh, of life. So uh, we want to hear from you guys. We want right. to hear exactly what you guys think. What is ethical to you? What is unethical to you um, in terms of jewelry? Right. Right. Gems. Exactly. Exactly. And um, and one one last point before we go ahead and end this. Sure. I I. You know, I'm very fortunate that I was born and raised in the United States, and I have the resources that the United States have to offer, um, you know, the, their citizens. I I remember back in high school, I had a teacher. She was well in her 50s, and she's never actually um, traveled outside of the country before. Okay. Uh, but she traveled to Africa. That's where her daughter uh, got married. Uh, and she basically told the stories that, you know, she loved it. She, it was a beautiful country. But what she was blown away with was that she did not realize that the lack of resources outside of the United States. And she never once, she thought that the whole world had the resources, the protection, the, um, the amenities, the utilities, the, the, the most basic things that mm -hmm. we take for granted. Uh, and they, don't, they didn't have it where she traveled to, 
right? I'm not saying that, that you know, the, the entire continent doesn't have it. I'm just saying, you know, where she traveled to. Just barely two weeks ago, I took, uh, I went on a cruise uh, with my family and uh, we went to Ensenadas. We were walking around Mexico and uh, there's this um, young boy uh, about the same age as Matthew, my son. He's six years old now. He came up to Matthew and he was selling him gum. And they call it chicle over there. Mm -hmm. um, Matthew stared at him and then stared at me with a stunned look uh, as if he just didn't know what to do. He was, he was stunned because he, didn't, he couldn't believe uh, that someone at his age looked you know, like him. Did he voice this to you afterwards? He did. He, 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 he basically said that he didn't know why uh, someone of his age is outside in the streets selling gum. I had to explain it to him. I had to, you know, really explain to him that there are diff we're in a different part of the world. Mm -hmm. um, what you have back at home, you're very fortunate that you don't have to think about these things. Uh, all you have to do is go to school. Um, mommy and daddy will do what we can to, to help you. And then, and then you can think about work when you get to a certain point in your life. There are places in the world where kids have to work. Mm -hmm. at a very young age or else they don't eat and I had to explain that to him which is very hard for me to explain that there's this is a reality of life in different parts of the world uh, so so th what's the point of the story the point is ethics right um, again unless we are more aware of how things are outside of our own circle and geography mm -hmm. then we would really have to question what is true ethics is child labor really unethical or does it depend on the circumstances of where you live in the world so um so yeah so that i wanted to make a point there um and really just kind of explain the scenario because matthew was just shocked he was just like whoa what's going on he gave me these eyes where he was just so confused he looked at me and and i knew he was confused and i had to talk to him about it later on and that so. was just a week ago well yeah about two weeks yep. mm -hmm. yeah so uh so i think that was a good experience for him to learn so that he doesn't take things for granted <laughs> right so anyway um that is how i want to wrap it up what are your opinions what are your thoughts what are your uh what's your take on ethical and unethical diamonds uh what does it take to make an ethical diamond and do you believe that that's even possible based on your own uh, values and based on your on your own opinions of what is ethical or what is not so uh with that said that's how we want to end it here uh, this is sid and i in episode 11 and i'll see you again next time bye